Hello folks. Last time around we were looking at Ohm's Law. We had introduced Ohm's Law, very important law, V is equal to I times R. And we looked at some variations on the theme as far as power law being combined with Ohm's Law. Today what we want to do is extend that idea in what's referred to as a series circuit. One voltage source and one resistor not a lot you can do there. What happens if we have multiple resistors? In other words, what happens if we have, say, something that looks like this? And I'm going to keep this simple by just having two resistors. All right, resistor number one, resistor number two, and our source E. Well, given our polarity, we would still expect the current to flow in this direction. In other words, out of the plus, through the resistors, and then back to the minus, right? Voltage rise, voltage drop. The question is, what is the equivalence of these two resistors? How do I find, you know, if, if for example, that's 10 ohms and this is 20 ohms, how do I find the result? There are many ways that we can uh, configure this. Series is just one of them, and the more components we have, the more complicated the configurations can be. But to answer this question, let's go back to our basic sort of little resistor drawing that we had a while back. Now this, this guy. And we said, look, there's a cross-sectional area here, there's a length here, I pass current through this. The material itself has a resistivity, rho, and we say that the resistance is equal to rho L over A. Right? So it's directly proportional to the length. It's inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. The fatter it is, the smaller the resistance. And then we have rho, right, the characteristic of the material. So it's directly proportional to that. So leaving rho constant, if you start monkeying with materials, right, area and length, what happens? Well, suppose you have two of these and they are identical. So here's one of them. And then I make another one, it's just like it. And I wire them so that the current goes from one into the other, like this. In other words, pretty much what I'm doing here. This could be R1 and this could be R2. Well, you know, if they're identical, then you could imagine collapsing them together into one unit. In other words, after squeezing them together, it would be like this. Like here's the seam, if you will, we smash them together. So what we've effectively done is we've kept the area the same, the material's the same, so rho is the same, and we've effectively doubled the value of L. So by doubling L, we double resistance, which if R1 and R2 are identical, that's the same as saying it's R1 plus R2. Now, if R2 was a bigger value, in other words, again, if I kept the cross-sectional areas the same, kept the material the same, and all I did to increase the value of R2 was to make it longer, you know, like this, then, once again, it appears that when we smash them together, all, of, all we've really done is added the two lengths. And since the resistance is proportional to the length, then it must be the case that the combined equivalent resistance is simply the addition of these values. So in a series loop, the total resistance is simply equal to the summation of the resistors, you know, however many resistors you have, right? Something like this. R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, you know, and so on and so forth, right? To R, you know, I'll call it K. So, um, if we came back here with some values, like, let's say, let's start with a 10 volt power source over here, and I said, this resistor is 250 ohms, and this resistor is 750 ohms, we could think of this as a single resistor. Right? This is just a circuit simplification. You can think of that, it has the same effective resistance 
is 250 plus 750, in other words, 1,000 ohms, 1K ohm. And this we've already seen, right? This is the, the exact problem we did in the last video. So I know the current flows like this. And I could find that current as simply being 10 volts divided by 1K ohm. In other words, it's 10 milliamps. Okay, so far so good. But something interesting happens here. If this circuit is an equivalent to this circuit, in other words, if a pair of resistors that add up to a K is equivalent as far as the source is concerned to a K, so let me put it this way. If we could imagine the source is sort of having a, a conscience, um, it was aware, right? It couldn't tell the difference between being hooked up to a K ohm and a 250 in, pair, in, in, uh, in series with a 750 because it produces the same amount of current. Either case, it's going to produce 10 milliamps. So we say this is an equivalent to this. It's not identical, but it's equivalent. It produces the same current. It will also produce the same total power. Remember, power generated has to equal power dissipated. So if I find 10 milliamps in this, then it must also be the case that there's 10 milliamps back here. And that 10 milliamps is going to produce a drop across the 250, and it's going to produce a drop across the 750. Ohm's law is going to tell us what those voltages are. So the voltage across, I have to come up here, the voltage across the 250 would have to equal its value times its current. Well, its current is 10 milliamps. And its resistive value is 250 ohms, or 0.25K. The Ks and the millis would cancel, and you'd have 0.25 of 10. In other words, this is 2.5 volts. For the 750, we would do the same thing. All right, we would take the 10 milliamps, so we would pass that through the 750, and we would get 7.5 volts. It is no coincidence that that adds up to 10 volts, which is the source we started with. It must be the case that the applied voltage has to equal the voltage that appears across the remainder of the circuit. And this would also be true if I had multiple sources, which we'll look at in just a sec. So important is this, we have a name for it. Gustav Kirchhoff came up with this nice law, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Note the double letters in Kirchhoff. People often misspell this. KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. And it basically states that the sum of voltage rises has to equal the sum of voltage drops. And the way I like to write that is this. The sum of voltage rises must equal the sum of voltage drops. So let's take a look at this diagram. Right, if this was ground, we go from ground up minus the plus. If that's a rise, we're saying it's going from minus to plus. So this point is above ground by 10 volts. Then we do a plus to minus on the 250, so we lose 2.5 volts. Then we go from this point to ground, and we lose the remaining 7.5 volts. Now very often we would give these connection points uh, either node numbers or letters. I like to use letters over here. I might call this point A and call this point B. So I might refer to a voltage. Now remember, a voltage is a potential difference. So a voltage is always implying two points. It's from one point to another. Has to be. Current so at a point, right? You measure the current at a point because it's a flow rate. A voltage is a potential difference. It has to be two points. So I can talk about a voltage from point A to point B. This is the way we would write it, VAB. So that would be like if you went in lab and you got your red and black leads on your meter. Remember, red is the hot lead. It's the plus lead. Black is the minus lead. If you've ever done any house wiring in the U.S., that code is backwards, right? And, and um, in house wiring, residential wiring, black is the hot lead. In electronics, no. No, 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 no. Red is hot. Black is either ground or neutral. All right? Okay. 
in any case, so I get out my, my meter and I'm going to measure my voltages. So I'm, I'm going to take a red meter lead, put it here, the black meter lead, put it here, and I'm going to read plus 10 volts. If I then go like this from point A to point B, because it's always going to be plus to minus, that's how we indicate this. VAB means from A to B, right? Red and then black we are going to measure the voltage across the 250. It's just another way of saying V250. But specifically with this polarity, red here and black here, that's also going to be 2.5 volts. Of course, you could say, what's VBA? In other words, put your red lead on B and your black lead on A. So what's happening? Look. Minus. The red lead's at the minus. It's saying the red lead is below the black lead. So this shows up as negative 2.5 volts. So you will notice throughout the text, and when I do these videos, I'm always putting these little pluses and minuses down here, and people sometimes think, oh, that's just, you know, busy work. No, it's not busy work. It's very important. Get in the habit of doing that, because that's how you know whether something is positive or negative. Now, in a simple series loop, you know, it's not too, too confusing, but eventually we're going to get into very large circuits with multiple sources, voltage sources, current sources, and so forth. Many, many resistors and in interesting configurations, and you can't tell what the polarity is just by looking at it. So when you figure things out, you have to include these pluses and minuses, otherwise you're going to go astray. Okay? You know, if you think a plus and minus isn't a problem, well, good luck balancing your checkbook, right? Pluses and minuses are very important. Okay, now we could figure out the power dissipation in each one of these resistors and guess what it would have to work out to. The total power in those two things would have to equal the power generated. So 10 volts times 10 milliamps is going to be 100 milliwatts. That's the total power generated. When I look at the two resistors, you know, I can do an I times V, or a V squared divided by R. I squared times R, my choice. Um, I know the current's 10 mils. I've already figured out the voltages, so I could say, for example, this one, that's going to be 2.5 volts times 10 mils. Well, that's going to be 25 milliwatts. And then the 70, 750, 7.5 volts times 10 mils, that's going to get me 75 milliwatts. So if this is 25 milliwatts, and this is 75 milliwatts, right? It's going to, oops, that's an M. Um, that's going to add up to 100 milliwatts. Power dissipated equals power generated. Great. All right. One final thing as far as these voltages are concerned. Um, very often you'll just see something like this, VB, without the second letter. What does that mean? Well, if there isn't a second letter, it's assuming that your black lead is going to ground. It's going to the, to the reference point. So if I just said VB, what I mean is take your red lead on the meter, stick it here, and then put the black lead on ground. So notice what that is. That is, in fact, the drop across the 750. So VB, just plain old VB, is the same as saying VB to ground, which is the same as saying the voltage across the 750. In other words, it would have to be, as we saw above, 7.5 volts. Okay? Okay, so far, so good. Are we done? No! We have more to do! And here we go. Are you ready? Snug up your shorts. Okay, so what if we want to add some other voltage sources? Did he just say snug up my shorts? Yes, he did. So what if I have something like this? Three resistors, two voltage sources. Let's say this is, oh, what's a good number? Let's say we have um, 24 volts for this thing, and we have uh, hmm, six volts for this, okay? And maybe I'll use a 1K for this, 500 ohms for this, and 300 ohms for that. And I'll put some 
points. I'll say that's point A, and that's point B, and that's point C, and that's point D. Well, I want you to take a look at these two power supplies, right? The 24 and the 6. This is plus to minus like so, and this is plus to minus like that. The 24 volt power supply wants to produce current in a clockwise direction. The 6 wants to produce it in a counterclockwise direction. What do you think happens? In other words, um, let's do something a little bit different, if that's confusing. Imagine you had like a pair of AA batteries. I mean, this is pretty common, you know, in a calculator, whatever. You got two AA's and they're configured like this. Well, plus to minus, plus to minus. So from this point, you're saying minus to plus, I'm going to rise up. This point right here is a volt and a half above this point. And then you do it again, minus to plus. So this point is a volt and a half above this point, which means it's three volts above this point. So this is equivalent to a single three volt power supply. Well, the same thing is true if you reverse it. You know, if you reverse one of these things, the net voltage is zero. Because, you know, let's say you reverse this guy on top. This point would be a volt and a half above, but then if you flip this, this thing would be a volt and a half below, so this point would be the same as this point. That's essentially what's happening here. You have a net volt, a net rise, right? You have a net applied voltage of 24 minus 6, or 18 volts. That's what we'll use for our equivalent, because ultimately I want to reduce this thing down to something like this. What's our total resistance here? Well, our series resistance is 1K plus 500 plus 300. So our total is just going to be 1.8K. What's the circulating current, right? This is the bigger one, so it sort of wins. The current's going to go like this. What you're saying is by comparison to our original circuit, you have this. Continual source, 1.8K. All right, so that current, 18 volts divided by 1.8K, will work out. Oh, coincidentally, it works out to 10 milliamps again. Look at that. Purely coincidental. I didn't mean for that to happen. It just did. Whatever. I could still do the same trick I did over here, though, to find these other voltages, right? The voltage across the 1K which is V A to B, right? Because the 24 wins, so like I said, the current's going like this, so that's plus to minus from left to right. So V of 1K is the same as V A B. That would be 1K times the current through it, 10 mils, so that's 10 volts. V B C is the six volt, that power supply. V B to C is six volts, done. The voltage across the 500, is the same as C to D, right? Because again, the current's going like this, so it's plus to minus. And lastly, through the 300, it's plus to minus down. So V500 is the same as VCD, which would be 500 ohms times the 10 mils, half a K times 10 mils, so that's gonna get us five volts. And then finally on the 300, right, that's VD, just VD, because right, the other end is ground, so I can just call it VD. And that's going to be 300 times 10 mils, which is 3 volts. So you add those up, there's your 18 volts. In fact, getting back to Kirchhoff's voltage law, sum of rises has to equal sum of drops. So where are your voltage rises? Right? Voltage rises. That's kind of an ugly looking arrow. Voltage rises. There, that's better. So I sit over here, just start at ground, and just start going, minus to plus, plus to minus, minus to plus, plus to minus. So everybody who shows up minus to plus, that's a rise. Everything that shows up plus to minus, that's a drop. Right? So these are rises, these are drops. Sum of rises must equal sum of drops. I don't care if it's a power supply, a resistor, or a piece of cheese. I'm just going to look at these pluses and minuses. What's with the cheese? Anyway, Plus to minus on the 1K. 
So that shows up as a drop, right? Plus to minus. I had the 24 minus the plus. Six volts, plus to minus. What? Plus to minus. That shows up in the drop column. I know it's a source, but look at the polarity and look at the direction of current. More on this in a moment. Same thing on the 500, plus to minus. That shows up in the drop column. And finally, the 300. Okay, add those up. 16, 21, and 3. 24 volts. Sum of rises equals sum of drops. Beautiful. Now you're thinking, I know what you're thinking, what's the deal with this 6 volt power supply? How does this show up as a drop? Would you ever do this? This seems crazy. Well, you wouldn't do it exactly like this, but sometimes you do feed currents into a resist, uh, excuse me, into a voltage source. And again, remember, power generated equals power dissipated. So this thing is dissipating power? Is that the question? Right? Question mark. Because of the way the current's going in, it's going into the plus. Well, what I'm describing is charging a battery. You feed current into it. And I'm charging up this battery. So that's what we would do with a rechargeable battery circuit. It wouldn't be this simple, but that's the concept, right? You feed the current into the plus terminal and you charge up the battery. Okay? All right, so that's the way we would approach this kind of a problem. If you have multiple voltage sources, figure out, you know, who wins. In other words, if you add up all the stuff that's going clockwise and all the stuff that's going counterclockwise, um, you just find out the bigger one, and that's the real way of the current, and you can reduce it ultimately into a circuit like this where you have a single voltage source and a single resistance that allows you to find the current, and then knowing the current, you can find the individual voltage drops. You can also do other things here. Since I have more than just a couple of points, I can ask for a voltage like VAC. And I would just say, well, what's voltage A and what's voltage, you know, what do I see as I go from A to C? Well, A is higher than C because it's plus to minus, plus to minus, right? Plus to minus, plus to minus. A is higher than B by 10 volts, right? That's the drop on the 1K. And then B is higher than C by 6 volts. So that's got to be 10 plus 6, or 16 volts. We could also talk about just VA, right? A to ground is 24 volts. And it wouldn't matter if you went from here to ground this way, plus to minus, or you went this way. You start at one point, you end at another. I don't care which path you take. The sum of the rises has to equal the sum of the drops. So whichever way you go, you're going to have to come up with the same answer. So you could take VA and subtract VC from it. That would also get you VAC. So VA is 24 volts. What's VC? Well, VC is from here to ground. It's the drop across the 500 and the drop across the 300, right? Plus to minus, plus to minus. So I know that's 8 volts. Okay, so that's VA is 24. And VC is a total of 8, so 24 minus 8 is 16 volts. Beautiful. Okay. You know, you, you would think it's magic. But as I like to say, it's way better than magic. Because it's real!